What's up everybody and welcome to part one of a Patreon pick double feature. Today I'm going to be giving you my top 10 horror remakes that are the worst, the most abominable remakes that I have ever seen. And there's a lot of movies to choose from. So as somebody that typically likes remakes quite a bit and is quite infamous for liking some remakes more than the originals, man, there's definitely the other side of the coin, let me tell you. So before I get started, let me know down below what your worst horror remakes, the ones that you despise the most are, and we could talk about that in the comments section once we are done with this video. And also, be sure to subscribe so you can check out part two, which is going to be my top 10 horror sequels that are better than the originals. And also, if you want to join in on the fun and join my Patreon crew and be a part of the votes and the polls and all the idea sharing that we go through to have these Patreon picks every single month, be sure to check the link down below for my Patreon page. It's the best and the easiest way to support this channel financially. I greatly appreciate you even checking it out. And you get a lot of cool exclusive things for being a patron, such as participating in these Patreon picks, as well as early access, like my Blu-ray collection video that I just dropped. They got it about a week early. Even some other exclusive content that I drop over there on occasion. So please consider checking that out, and thank you so much. Now, on to the shit bombs. Starting off at number 10 is going to be The Wicker Man, starring Nicolas Cage. Now, the original one is an absolute horror classic. It's been redone in numerous ways. There's a, quite a few movies that have taken that core concept of The Wicker Man and repackaged it. This one, wow, you want to talk about repackaging it. Now, the reason it's number 10 is because if you watch this movie with a certain intention similar to the happening it's one of my favorite unintentional comedies of all time if you watch the wicker man with nicholas cage with the intent on laughing your ass off at his line delivery at the bees oh no not the bees not the bees ah! oh, no, my eyes! My eyes! Ah! at him drop kicking women in bear suits it you can't write this shit the movie is fucking hilarious but as a horror remake, as something that is supposed to horrify you, as something that is supposed to bring that iconic story of the Wicker Man to a new generation, talk about an epic fail. Coming in at number nine is going to be Rob Zombie's Halloween. Now, I like parts of this movie, namely the third act, you know, the part that's actually similar to John Carpenter's original masterpiece. But the problem with this remake is the first two acts exist, especially that first act. When this movie opens up, and the first 30 to 40 minutes of it is just the most abominable white trash porno dialogue that you have ever heard, which is, you know, pretty par for the course with the Rob Zombie film. It just does not feel right for a, a Halloween film. It doesn't even feel right for this Halloween film. That's the most despicable part of the movie. Every single time I rewatch this, I might as well just fast forward that first act completely because there's absolutely nothing in the first 30, 40 minutes of this movie that I enjoy. Absolutely nothing. You get to the second act, and this is just the biggest wasted potential of this movie. If you're going to go back and tell the origin of Michael Myers, and you're gonna give all these answers to questions that quite honestly we weren't really wanting answers to, but nonetheless, you wanna do that, fine. One of the most compelling parts of this story is seeing those early interactions between Dr. Loomis and young Michael in this asylum. All those years where what led him to not speak anymore? What happened between these two that made them have this kind of weird symbiotic need for each other? What happened there? You don't even really get to know. It, it, it's Fast forwarded through that, one version of the movie you get a rape scene, the other one you get a generic escape scene, and then you just get a quickened, heightened, more bloody, more Rob Zombified version of the John Carpenter classic. This could have been a very interesting companion piece, but Rob Zombie insists on, on being Rob Zombie. Number eight is Black Xmas. This is the first remake of Black Christmas. And yes, you will see the second remake somewhere on this list, much higher. Black Xmas, it, it could be a guilty pleasure. I can see somebody watching this and just liking it for how zany and how ridiculous and how balls to the wall it goes for the gore and the incest and the cannibalism and just, yes, all of that. Just pile it on. That's what this movie does. The problem is that the original Black Christmas is one of the greatest slasher movies of all time and one of the most underappreciated, undervalued, slasher movies of all time. So when you take that original movie and you kind of just lose all sense of what made that so terrifying and so iconic and you just say, okay, we're gonna take that core concept of these characters with Billy and Agnes and we're just gonna go full on gore porn with it. 
it just doesn't work for me. Again, if you like gore, if you like insane shit, you just want to see things go balls to the wall, I can see the guilty pleasure. For me, I'm not guilty about saying I get very little pleasure from this one. Number seven is going to be Gus Van Zant's Psycho. Now, on paper, this is technically a good movie because technically it's the exact same fucking movie that we saw that Alfred Hitchcock gave us with a, a couple of alterations, a couple of, you know, weird little artistic sky montages, uh, Anne Heche's butthole, so, you know, small additions, masturbation scene, yeah, that's cool. But the problem with me is that I do not like shot for shot remakes. I don't understand the point of them. I would never understand why you would take a proven classic, especially, and just do that shit again with a modern camera lens and new actors and say, hey, what do you think? That to me, that's that's the filmmaking version of plagiarism at its core. And I don't understand. Like, there's nothing about this movie that would ever make me go, you know, I'm in a psycho mood. I think I'm going to watch the Gus Van Zant one. No, there's nothing here that would ever make me do that decision. I could see why you would like it if you love Psycho and you just want to see that story again in color. But beyond that, this has nothing that I would ever watch it for. I am always going to pull the Hitchcock one off the shelf. Oh, and not to mention Vince Vaughn. I love you. That was a mistake. Big ass mistake. Coming just above that is going to be the shot for shot remake of The Omen. Now, to be honest, it and Psycho are pretty damn close for me. The only reason why I'll put The Omen just slightly higher on the worst list is because at least Psycho tries to do a couple of things differently. This is quite literally shot for shot. Line for line, camera angle for camera angle, 100% plagiarism, and every single performance in this movie pales in comparison to the original, where at least there's one or two performances in Gus Van Zandt's movie that I probably would prefer. I, I like Julianne Moore better in that one, and I like William H. Macy better in that one. This, no, I will take everything from the original. Give me Gregory Peck, I'm sorry. Ray Donovan, I love you, you don't belong in this movie. The Omen, you could have easily have given a very creepy, insane, modern take on this movie, but going the shot for shot remake, just shot this franchise in the head for another decade or two at least. Number five is going to be Poltergeist. Holy hell, where did this go wrong? You have Sam Rockwell in the main lead role. To me, that was like, okay, this is definitely gonna be watchable if nothing else for him. And to the movie's credit, that's the only part of the movie that is watchable, a couple of moments with Sam Rockwell, but everything in this movie pales pales in comparison to the original. Nothing's as effective, nothing's as creepy, nothing's as genuine, and even like the super modern special effects finale where the house is kind of collapsing in on itself, it just has no weight to it whatsoever. And it makes no sense. You walk outside, not a single fucking neighbor's outside going, what is that shit going on? The only way I've chosen to make sense of it in my head is that every single person in that subdivision aside from this family is at home watching the original film. Even they don't give a shit what's going on over at that house. Number four, now we're getting into some serious heartbreak. A Nightmare on Elm Street. I've told the story a couple of times. I saw this movie three times in theaters, and the first time I kind of liked it, the second time I just liked it, the third time I wanted to shoot myself. I, I thought this movie was just a gigantic missed opportunity. I I I'll clean up the language and just say that. Uh, this is a classic movie that is near and dear to my heart that you could have carte blanche and do whatever the hell you want with this concept. That's one of the most beautiful things about the A Nightmare on Elm Street franchise is that every single time you make a new one, you can do whatever you want. It's in the dream world. Have at it, go nuts. And what do they do? They play it safe and just recreate a bunch of scenes from the original movie that looks god awful. I mean, even something as simple back in the 80s, which was a piece of fucking felt a piece of spandex on the wall that Freddy leaned out of and gave this creepy ass effect that was totally iconic. They just washed it away and put the most garbage CGI effect of him floating around in a cloud. <sighs> Horror filmmaking 101, motherfuckers. Practical over digital. Practical over digital. Can you hear me? Finally. Then you get into the plot of the movie. They try to do this bait and switch. Is Freddy innocent? Was he burned alive because these kids were telling lies and that's why he's got revenge? Oh, no, he, he was fucking them. He was fucking kids. They take away the child murderer side of things and they just focus on the child molestation side of things. Hello, the, the fucking horror icon in the movie, despite how ridiculous this is to say, 
is the hero of these films. These are the ones that we go to. We don't go to Camp Crystal Lake to go hang out with a bunch of nude teenagers. We go to see Jason fucking people up. And it's the same concept in Nightmare on Elm Street. We don't go to check out what Nancy's doing or what fucking Glenn's doing across the street with his little 80s shirt. No, we go to see Freddy tearing people apart. You can't root for the motherfucker if he's fucking kids. Yes, the, the that side of things has always been subtext. It's always been suggested, the tongue shit through the phone, all of that is suggested. But there's a reason why it was always subtext. It was always in the background. The child murderer stuff was always in the forefront because that other stuff, you don't make that the fucking forefront. And they found that out the hard way. Jackie O'Haley did his best. I honestly think he could have been a good Freddy in a better script, but this was not it. I'm done ranting on this one, number four. Number three is gonna be Prom Night. How the hell could you not improve on that original? I mean, don't get me wrong. The original's creepy. I remember watching the original like it was yesterday. It was like two in the morning. I was up by myself. I was like 10 years old. I turned the channels. I come to this movie where these kids are running around in an abandoned building. Kill, kill. And the chick falls and dies. And I was like, oh, I'm so scared. I'm looking around. The creepy phone calls where he's just listening and breathing. <sighs> That's actually a pretty decent slasher, despite being very, very low budget. But you can improve on just about every single aspect of that movie with a modern film. What do they do? Just get rid of all that storyline. Just make it the most generic bullshit story about this teacher that's obsessed with this fine ass blonde and he's just going to murder people on prom night. Fuck you. Number three. Number two is another abysmal remake to an amazing John Carpenter film, and that is The Fog. Why? Why does this exist? The original The Fog is one of the coolest, most unique, and most effective ghost stories ever put to film. It's genuinely an underrated Carpenter classic. I highly recommend you check it out. This is an exercise, once again, on why practical works every time better than digital in a horror film. The digital fog effects absolutely destroy this movie. But if that, if that wasn't bad enough, the characters, the performances, the acting, the, the, the low budget look of certain camera, it, it, nothing in this movie works. Absolutely nothing. You have Superman leading the charge in an absolute shit bomb remake that I have only had the patience to watch once. And I will never watch this thing again. And that leads us to number one, which I am still surprised at how horrendous this movie is. What an abomination this thing was. And that is Black Christmas 2019. I, I don't have words. I don't have words to describe how miserable this movie is, that it exists. No disrespect to the filmmakers, no disrespect to the director, to the writer. I know everybody intends to make a good movie. Nobody puts this much time, this much blood, sweat, and tears into something that says, you know what, I want to make an absolute piece of shit. So I respect that you tried. Unfortunately, what you were trying to do, though, is hammer a message down everybody's throat rather than make a good movie. So you kind of bit off a lot more than you could chew and you were the agent of your own massacre here. Black Christmas 2019, again, same problem that Black Christmas has. You lose every single aspect of what made that original film great. And this has even less ties to the original than Black Xmas does. At least that movie takes a lot of the characters and the concepts and the certain scenes and visuals and just retools them in a fucked up way. This movie just borrows the title and has a couple of small shots that somewhat reminisce about the original movie. It, it just, this is a film that even without the social message being crammed down your throat from the opening frame, no exaggeration, it's an abysmal slasher film. There's no tension. There's little to no blood. There's absolutely zero engagement in the story or with any of the characters. There's no surprise whatsoever who ends up being the villain at the end. It's actually quite humorous that you even thought that that was going to be somewhat surprising. There's no red herrings. There's nothing. And by the end of it, it's just an absolute piece of garbage on its own. You add in all the offensive bullshit about how anti-male this movie is, which look, I've said before, I even said in my review, there is a version of this movie that probably could have been hilarious. If you'd have just leaned 
into the fact that you were going so heavy handed with that anti-male shit, you could make a version of this movie that would be genuinely fucking funny to laugh at all the anti-male propaganda all over this. But you played it so, so serious that you were literally cramming from the opening minute to the end that women rock, men are disgusting evil pigs, and you should all hang your head in shame for the next 90 minutes while we show you some girl power shit. Well, fuck you, because even the feminists didn't want anything to do with this movie. It was one of the worst horror films that I've seen over the past five years. It's one of the worst films that I have ever reviewed on this channel, and it is my worst number one horror remake. Black Christmas, rest in peace. Until Dave McRae's movie, so what do you guys think about my top 10 worst horror remakes? Is there something missing on your list that you think is even more offensive and abysmal than the ones that I gave attention to? Is there something on this list that you actually love and have no idea why I would say such nasty things about it? Let me know your list down below and we will talk about it. Be sure to like and share this video and hit that subscribe button so that you can see part two of this double feature coming out in a couple of days, which is top 10 horror sequels that are better than the originals, and that's gonna be a difficult list. So thank you guys for watching as always. Be sure to check out that Patreon link too so you can join in on the fun. And remember as always, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.